We are here on this earth for one reason and one reason only, and that is to bring glory to the Lord. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, Bangyai Baptist Church. We thank the Lord for this opportunity that we could gather and we could worship Him in spirit and in truth. We could sing hymns, we could read and study His Word, and enjoy the fellowship of being together. And even to those who are worshiping with us online, we thank God for your presence and hope that you will be blessed with His Word today. Psalm 66, verses 1 to 4. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of His name. Give to Him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. As we begin our worship, may I invite everyone to take a moment of silence as we pray. May I request everyone to please stand as we sing our first, first song, All Praise to Him.
life in our event, not only to us, but this Lord to meet each day of you to worship you, your Father. Thank you for this opportunity to be together, uh, fellowship with one another, uh, sing praises, and uh, thanksgiving in your name. Lord, the most important Lord, to listen to your word. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your grace, for your mercy, for your love. Pray this, Father, that we know our portion of this Lord, we give glory and honor to your name. We give glory to you, ourselves, as the Lord will be able to bless us from anything, Lord, that will guide us, Lord, to fully commit our hearts, for today, as we worship you. We ask that the name will fill us, Lord, with the Holy Spirit. Once again, Lord, we give our all the glory. Thanksgiving, your name, for me, this worship service to you, Lord, in Christ's name, Amen. Amen. Please take your seat. For our next song, we will sing Perfect Peace.
would like to thank um, Atonia Saturday Cleaners. Pupunin uh, natin Joshua, ni Milbert Shine, Mang Lassie, Coco Climates. Thank you so much for uh, cleaning the building, preparing for our worship service. And also thank you for the flowers. Okay. Uh, next Saturday, uh, we're going family. Uh, no, together with Kaka and Mang Joy. Also, we would like to thank Atonia Food Sponsor for today. Liguna, uh, Perionis, Kaupunga, and Milberg, and Shine. Thank you so much, Atonia Lunch Karun. And for our dishwashers, um, Fort Sunday na group ang mga bukas. Okay, so it's a first Sunday. Uh, may ara kita na mag-gather kita sa Atonia monthly offering, but at the same time, we are also gathering atunya love offering so may kita din na duha ka um, bags ang isa blue mo na atunya monthly offering para sa mga mga but i i think uh, most of us are doing it, it online pero if you want to give sa amin yung uh, love offering and the message lang na uh, brother mike or madam lisa para ma specify nila mo para sa din ang uh, offering also uh, please do pray sa atunya Dua ka uh, candidates for deacon, Tita uh, Tats and Mom Jen, padayon mo for sa ina, and also karon sa atun namon nga elders na monthly meeting, ay uh, uh, please pray for us also. Kagang uh, atun nga church anniversary next month na, second Sunday of July, so please pray, uh, hopefully. Uh, by the end of this month, we will finalize our venue. So, we will be able to do our announcements. We will be able to do the group. We will be able to do Sunday school uh, next Sunday. Thank you so much. 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 Before we listen to God's word, uh, we have the privilege to listen to a special number from uh, Nong Joshua. Our, our song of the month is entitled, uh, His Mercy is More.
God, we made it through half of the year. God has been faithful. We thank you for the introduction of our song of the month. So we open our Bibles to Job chapter 6. We'll look at the whole chapter this morning and as we have been doing so far in this book. It's pretty long if you will take it verse by verse, but we'll take it section by section and try to understand what the point of every section is trying to convey. So I'll be reading from verses 1 to 13. Just follow it with your eyes. Job chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. Job chapter 6, verse 1, Then Job answered and said, O oh, that my vexation were weighed, and all my calamity laid in the balances, for then it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. Therefore my words have been rash, for the arrows of the Almighty are in me, my spirit drinks their poison, the terrors of God are arrayed against me. Does the wild donkey bray when he has grass, or the ox low over his father? Can that which is tasteless be eaten without salt, or is there any taste in the juice of the mallow? My appetite refuses to touch them. They are as food that is loathsome to me. Oh, that my, I might have my request, and that God would fulfill my hope, that it would please God to crush me, that he would let loose his hand and cut me off. This would be my comfort. I would even exult in pain unsparing, for I have not denied the words of the Holy One, what is my strength that I should wait? And what is my end that I should be patient? Is my strength the strength of stones or is my flesh bronze? Have I any help in me when resource is driven from me? May God bless the reading of his word, shall we pray. Father, we come to you in all humility, with all honesty. That we know nothing is hidden from your sight. You see through our hearts. You know our deepest thoughts. You know every detail of our life. So we have nothing to hide before you. The just, the holy, and the righteous God. So if there are any sins hidden within our hearts, we want to bring them to the open. Confess them before you. Ask for mercy and for grace that you would forgive and would cleanse. Help our hearts, Lord, to be in tune with you so that when you speak, we will be able to hear. So that when you teach, we'll be able to receive the truths that you want us to receive. I pray that as your word is preached, you will be glorified. Your will will be made known. You will be the center of this worship. Everything we are and everything we do, we want to do it for you. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Spider sense is one of the superpower that Spider-Man apparently got from being bitten by a radioactive spider, which means that he has the ability to be super sensitive about his surroundings. He has great awareness. He can hear from afar. He can feel things from afar. But how many of us have ignorant and insensitive friends? If Spider-Man is super sensitive, we have friends that are too insensitive. And by insensitive and ignorant, I do not mean the kind of friends who do not care for us. Because these friends may do care. 
But I mean the type of friends who think they know it all, experience it all, and they really know what's best for you, so they are quick to analyze your problem or your situation. And they are quick to diagnose you. And they, they are seem to quick to prescribe a solution. These are the type of friends that are wannabe or feeling doctors when you are sick. Na kung sila mag doon sa galpo sa doktor, ah, dapat ang muning bulong, tanay, gininom mo. Kung tatun mo na imo bulong, ang doktor gani, huwag nagambal, ikaw ya. When you have money problems, they feel that they are the financial experts. When you have marital problems, they feel that they are the marriage experts. And here in the case of Job, he has friends who are wannabe or feeling that they are God. Because they're too quick to analyze and diagnose the cause of Job's suffering. As we realized last time in chapter 4 and 5, Eliphaz was too quick to prescribe a solution. Job, you're suffering because of your sin. If I were you, I would admit it. I would confess it. You, I would repent of it so that God would restore your fortune. So this morning, we listen to Job's first response. This is his first rebuttal. So we get to ask, how then do we respond to comforters? To people who desire to comfort us, but we realize that in the process of giving us that comfort, in reality, they are ignorant and insensitive. If we are someone who is suffering, how we wish that all that we ever have to deal with is how to find a solution to whatever that is causing our suffering. Yung problema, ako mo tanong, yung mapaayo na lang ko. That I would be healed, that I would get better. But how greater the pain and the complication there will be in our suffering if we have to deal with more pain, not caused by the problem itself, but with the people who are trying to help us. Weird, no? Nagbulig ka gani, why ka pa nakabulig? Nakadugang ka pa sa problema. So then, if we have these people around us coming to us with these comforting words, but we realize that they're ignorant and insensitive to our problems, how do we respond to them? Verse 1, Then Job answered, now, Job's friends were kind enough to sit with him in sympathetic silence for seven days in chapter 2. Then Job broke the silence with an anguished rant in chapter 3. That's why Eliphaz responded with a poetic call to repentance in chapters 4 and 5. Now, Job will answer for the first time the words of Eliphaz the Temanite. And we said, since this is a debate, they would go back and forth. He accuses Job with something. He tells Job to do something. So Job gets to respond to what he said. Now let us look at um, the nature of this rebuttal in chapter 6 and 7 first. Because the speech as a whole seems to show us a progression. We'll look at every perspective that Job is trying to present his case. He moves from the first person. So he starts off this chapter with looking within himself. It's a first person perspective uh, uh, soliloquy. Then he will shift to a second person plural, addressing his friends. In chapter 7, he would return to the first person um, language before moving to second person. So he would go back and forth between the first and the second person. Now my first impression here, as I look at ver uh, verses 1 to 7, the immediate response of Job to his friend's speech is not a direct attack to the speaker. Ang tobla, ikaw ginakusar, pero ang pagsabat niya sa verse 2, Oh, that my vexation were weighed. He starts with himself. Diba? So it's a rationality defense or a reasonable defense of why he said what he said in chapter 3. Here he explains himself why he expressed his despair that way in that long chapter of a soliloquy. 
Ang sa verse 2. His response there were to complain about the greatness of his suffering. If my vexation, if my calamity were weighed, how heavy would it be? How much of verse 3? It would be heavier than the sand of the sea. It is a poetic way of saying what I go through is very heavy and very burdensome. Now it's interesting that the word vexation in the Hebrew means to vex or to agitate or to stir up or to provoke the heart to a heated condition. This word vexation can be translated to anger. This is what God feels with sin. God is not happy. He is uncomfortable with sin. And the proper word to be um, translated here in verse, uh, verse 2, that, oh, that my grief, everything that I felt bad about my calamities, if you will put it in a weighing scale, it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. The word calamity comes from the word or the idea of the literal fall of rain and snow. We have a term that, uh, we have a term for that in Ilonggo. Dogintiphagan ko, donapusan ko. This is the word that they use in Hebrew. It's like a, a rain, a heavy rain, a heavy snow falling down. It's a fall in fortune. So Job is telling his friend, you know why I express myself that way? Because it was so heavy. I was in so much grief and so much calamity was weighing upon my shoulders, heavier than the sand of the sea. How heavy could the sand, of, all the sand of the sea be? Last Friday, we were in Pattaya. Malimang mga kaipapa, madala ko balas. Okay, para kuno sa mga kabataan niya sa eskulahan. Gamay lang akong dalon. Poetic. I am under such heavy pain. So this was Job's first response to the words of Eliphaz because Eliphaz only made his suffering worse. I'm going to this in verse 3. Therefore, my words have been rash. While Job was in deep pain, yet he can still think and explain it reasonably as to why he expressed himself that way. His outburst here did not curse God, though he did come close. But here he admitted that his words indeed were rash. But his rash words, sambaya, were because of the excessive heaviness of his grief. First lesson to Subungaga, under the heavy weight of calamities and grief, the godly sufferer will still be connected to sound reasoning despite the emotional outburst. Now, Job was still conscious enough that it was indeed an emotional outburst. I was in so heavy weight of calamity. That's why I burst out with rash words. But the fact that he was still able to explain it it tells me that his emotions are still connected to his reasoning capacity. He has not lost it altogether. So to be, so be conscious of bursting out emotionally in a rash manner. It's okay to burst out emotionally, but never lose connection with sound reasoning. Don't get carried away all the way with emotions. Although I'm not even sure if Job had to reasonably explain his emotional outburst because it was his natural way of doing so or was it out of necessity? Feeling ko, do ano bla, do tungod kagin ako sa ranas ng iyamigo, di ma-explain pa ko, di sige explain ko na lang. Ngayon tani, mapautwas ma lang to siya. But I like what G. Campbell Morgan said, Job declared in effect here that he did not understand the cry because in the first place, he did not even know the pain. He just knows that he is in so much grief. There was so much calamity. Yes, I, I, I bursted out in 
rash words. But all of that, I don't even understand the source of my pain. Dinto na galin. Verse 4. Job explained why his suffering was so deep and his words were so rash. Verse 4. For the arrows of the Almighty are in me. My spirit drinks their poison. The terrors of God are arrayed against me. It was because he felt that God himself had attacked and cursed him. He is feeling that God had shot arrows at him, sent poison against him, arrayed his terrors against him. These are all figures of speech picturing the trials that they come from God. Indicating that Job believed these were God's judgments. And the attack from God, the Almighty, are not just simple arrows. They are poisonous arrows. We did not. Yes. There are archers. Archers. That they dip their, the, the, the tip of their arrow with poison. So that when it goes through a person, it does not only inflict wound, but it brings poison. So makes the, it makes the wound worse and he could die a pain a more painful death normally adam clark there is an evident reference here to wounds inflicted by poison arrows it will cause burning fever intense thirst to dry up all the moisture in the system stop all sal salivary ducts thicken and inflame the blood induce decomposition and and it will Produce a raging mania, producing the most terrifying images. Job, the only relief is death. And so Matthew Poole commented on this verse: somebody arrows fitly or properly calls Job's afflictions, because like arrows, these afflictions came upon him swiftly suddenly one after another and that he feels that it came from on high and they wounded him deeply and deadly now why do i get the feeling that the suggestion from eliphaz that job was suffering because of god's punishment of his sin was getting into him Eliphaz was insisting in the previous two chapters, Job, you're suffering because God is chastening you, disciplining you. Now, he begins to look to that fact and now he begins to feel that God is indeed attacking him. Verse 6, Does the wild donkey bray when he has grass? Now, at first I thought that he was still talking about God or his pain because of God but now he expressed or he insisted that he had reason for his grief now initially I, I, I did not understand the word bray does the wild donkey bray when he has grass actually the meaning of the word bray is donkey sound and he big some donkey. And I, I don't know why they use a specific word for that. Kag ang lowing is a mumana ang tawag sa English. Sa mumana ang tawag sa English ang moo. Ito pa naman, moo. Ang munang sound sa cow. The point of Job here is that the donkey and the cow would not cry if they have food. And so Job is saying, I would not burst out if I was not in pain. Because wailing is an evident of a need, of a suffering. So the donkey and the cow would not cry out if they were not hungry. Verse 6, can that which is tasteless be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the juice? of the mallow. So now Job then describes how the words of Eliphaz tasted to him. They were what? They were weak and flavorless and certainly did not give Job any health or strength. And this is the first time that Job reacts to what his friend said to him. 
Your words were tasteless. It was not helpful. To the point of verse 7, my appetite refuses to touch them. When I was in high school, I lived in the house of my aunt and my, my uncle apparently has diabetes and um, hypertension. So my aunt, since she was a nutritionist, had to make him nutritious food. Every day, may anong kinasama siya ng bawan ng isda na may utan. It looks so good. Nga kanamis ang isda, kapriskas ang utan, may may ano na, may kamatis, kagtananda nga kanamit nga utan. And I was tempted to give it a taste. And apparently, when I tasted it, it was namplaw. <laughs> Too big. Because my aunt was cutting down on the salt for my uncle. Tell me, Job. At least if you tried to comfort me, give me something that would be useful. That my appetite would somehow touch it. That would somehow strengthen me. But your words were tasteless. Kung sa ilong gupa ni, hindi makaon ang ginhambal mo. Hindi matulon ang ginhambal mo. So while the godly sufferer can be confused with false conviction of sins, he can still discern bad, uncomforting words. Job is, is now beginning to be confused. What, is God really attacking me for my sin? Lord, you're sending me these arrows to punish me for my sin? Yes, I'm in a state of confusion, but I can still discern. I can still feel if the words that you said to me were good, were comforting, or not. This is still an evident case that he has not lost connection with his reasoning capacity. Kagina, he realizes his words were rash and now he realizes that his friend's words were no better. It was not helpful. And he has expressed this discernment to his friend. Manamali Charles Spurgeon, the speech to which Job had listened from Eliphaz, the Temanite, did not put much sweetness into his mouth because it was without sympathy and consolation. If you read it at home, you will see that it was worthy to be the first of a singular selection of galling utterances. He had spoken as harshly and severely as if he were a judge addressing a criminal rather than comforting a suffering friend. Mamali Job, dumapusan na ko sa problema ko, dugangan niyo pagin. Sino man yung matandog sa ginambal niyo sa akon man? Sino makatulon sin eh? Verse 8 to 13, the second part of Job's rational explanation of his rash complaint here is predicated on the fact, verse 8, Oh, that I might have my request, that God would fulfill my hope, that it, he would, it would please Him to crush me, that He would let loose His hand and cut me off. This would be my comfort. I would even exult in pain and sparing. Ano ginamal verse 8 and 9? He is still hoping to die. He is still in feeling of despair. In chapter 3, he mourned the day of his birth and believed he would be better off dead. In his present pain, Job's request and hope was not for God to bring healing or restoration. Lang tobla. Kung ang paglaong mo lang, hindi ka na maayo. But that your hope, you would just die to give you relief from your suffering. Though Job never seems to have contemplated suicide, he wished God himself would do it. Yes, hindi ko ya magbigte, but Lord, ikaw na lang bi. What was his request? That God would finish him off. Okay, no? Now, this word is interesting because it is a metaphor from a weaver. Termino ni sa mga mananahi nga ginautod nila ang sobrang hilo. Isaiah 38, My dwelling is plucked up and removed from me like a shepherd's tent. Like a weaver, I have rolled up my life. He cuts me off from the loom. 
Though some suggest that the idea here may again have God as an archer shooting arrows at Job. If that is true, Amaya sa Ginoo, Lord, tapusan na lang ko. Give me the kill shot. But why would Job say this that desiring that God would just readily end his life? Verse 9, for I have not denied the holy one. For the first time, Job insists on his innocence. In the previous chapter, in chapter 4, Eliphaz is claiming that Job had lost his faith. But here, Job is sure that I have not denied the words of God. That is the King James rendering. Whatever he said to me, I know that I still believe it. I know that I'm still obeying him. So I, I can die under his hands because I would die an innocent death. The Lord, patya na lang ko, innocente man ko, para lang matapos na ning akong mga kasakit. Job had not avoided the revelation of God that he had received. The commands of the Holy One were precious to him and he had lived by them. Although this was confusing to him because if he looks at his life, I was obedient. If there was, of course, wala to simba sa time ni Job na makatugis sa simbahan. Kung may simba pa, he is the first one to go there, the last one to leave. He reads his Bible every day. He listens to the sermon intently. Kung may di-group, siya pa na group, pinakamayo mag-share. And probably, he could even preach. I have not denied the words of God. Why am I suffering? So God might as well end my life because I would die an innocent man. The point of the first section here seems to be under the heavy weight of calamities and grief, the godly sufferer will be connected to two things. Despite the emotional outbursts, okay, I am in, I'm under heavy weight of calamities. I will burst out emotionally, but I'm not disconnected to two things, sound reasoning and my faith. These are the two things that I know until I die, I can still hold on to them. I have not lost my mind and I have not lost my faith. I have not denied the words of the Holy One. Elmer Smith, Job would have one consolation left before he died. Yes, Eliphaz, if you were not able to comfort me, it's okay. But my comfort is this. If I die, I died a faithful man. Although I rejected your words. I did not reject the words of God, but your words is unacceptable. Job here sends a responsibility to not deny Ang rendering sa King James to conceal, wai kugin tago, wai kugin tabunan ang pulong sa gino. Amo na ang comment si Charles Spurgeon: If the next generation should become more wicked than the present and still more ignorant of the gospel, the fact is, the accusation will upon be those who conceal the words of God. Today, how many sermons have you listened? Ngayon sa pagpamate mo, ano to ang bali pastor man? Do hindi ko insindi ako. And it, I don't only mean of the of the preachers who do not preach an understandable sermon. It could be a rhetoric. It could be an orator. Ngayon to kagrabi gid kataas gid sa mga ginhambal niya, but you end up not understanding a thing. This is still concealing the word of God. Emily Job, I have not concealed, I have not denied the words of the, the Holy One. His words are clear to me. I obey them perfectly. I still hold on to my faith. So holding on to reasoning in our faith in the midst of heavy calamity. You still hold on to your faith. You appreciate God. 
nga away gin hatag ang imong request. What was Job's request? God, take my life. Ramon J. Campbell Morgan. When the answer does not come, when instead of the release of cutting off, we have the continuity of pain and a great silence, let us remember this story and remain confident that there's some explanation and that when it comes, we shall thank God that He did not give us. That's why I, I realized, Guru, sa mga tiniyon na ako, lulo, kapangamuyo, Lord, kwaan lang ko. And for so many years, I've been praying, Lord, kwaan ako, kwaan ako. God knows better nga why pa sa ginkuha. I know that some days are more painful than the others. And I think that Job had pain every day to the point that he can even quantify the levels of his pain. Siguro, sangin restore sa sangin no, he would look back and said, Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Isang nangamuyo ko, at doon mo na akong kabuhi, wala mo ginhatang. You allowed the pain to continue. You were silent, but you had better purpose for me. Because there are two things that he held on to. What? His reasoning and his faith. I will not let go. I have not denied your words. And he would end this section lamenting his weakness. Namihan ko sa sininga pagpautwa siya bila sa verse 11. What is my strength that I should wait? What is my end that I should be patient? Because Job was accused of being impatient. Job, you were rash. The way that you express yourself in chapter 3 reveals an impatient man. So gin sabat sila ni Job. Ano gidakon ko so? What is my goal in life that I should be patient? Look at my condition. That's why I like verse 12. Is my strength the strength of stones? Or is my flesh bronze? Ilong guhana bla? Ano ko si Rizal sa plaza? Ngabisan, anong mukha tampa sa akon? Anong mukha ko si sa akon? Habuya ko ba to? Kung, Rizal, kung si Rizal ko sa plaza, will he feel anything? Because he is a stone. Job is like telling them, I have feelings. That's why I burst out. What do you expect of me? Not feel anything? And do not cry? Nakun sa mga playground, pasang gamay ka, do agi ka? Sige ka dahibi? Job is telling them, I have feelings. I'm not a stone, I'm not a bronze. And he ends there, verse 13, Have I any help in me? He looks back at his own house. He lost all his business. He lost all his children. Where is my help? All my resources are gone. So he does not only have deep feelings of weakness, deep feelings of despair. He wanted to die. Now he also feels helpless. Looking within for a hidden resource of help, he finds nothing. So, under the heavy weight of calamities, the godly sufferer can burst out emotionally. We are in touch, we should be in touch with our feelings. And this is something that we must tell ourselves. If you feel sad, if you feel grief, if you feel that you're helpless, embrace it. And tell yourself, hindi ko si Rizal. Nga hindi ko mahibi. Nga hindi gid ko maapiktuhan. Nga hindi gid ko matina. But I burst out emotionally while holding on to sound reasoning and never let go of my faith. Feeling of despair, feeling of weakness, wanting to die, and helplessness. Can the godly have these feelings? Yes. The words of Job can bring immense comfort for the simple reason that many sufferers have felt rage, but have been too ashamed to express it. 
Now it's not a laughing matter, but the world is waking up to the reality that they have to express themselves emotionally, and they call it mental health. Wala masalang gambal emotional health. Pero gapang ita malang sila outlet. But their but their but their concept of emo, uh, mental health is you find someone you talk to that you pay him so much nga sila mamati lang. But I realize in the book of Job, you don't need, maybe you need, if the problem is very great. But this is God's way of encouraging us that if Job is pouring out, you don't need to pay someone to pour out. Maybe you just have to have an example, have to have someone crying out this deep pain, despair, weakness, helplessness. So that we will be encouraged, that we must not be ashamed to express our rage. Ipautwas, and you express it in the right avenue. Verse fourteen: He who withholds kindness from a friend forsakes the fear of the Almighty. My brothers are treacherous as a torrent bed, as torrential tr- streams that pass away, which are dark with ice and where the snow hides itself. When they melt, they disappear. When it is hot, they vanish from their place. The caravans turn aside from their course. They go up into the waste and perish. The caravans of Tima look. The travelers of Sheba hope. They are ashamed because they were confident. They come there and are disappointed. For you now, you have now become nothing. You see my calamity and are afraid. Have I said, make me a gift? Or from your wealth, offer a bribe for me? Or deliver me from the adversary's hand? Or redeem me from the hand of the ruthless? From trying to explain to his friend why he complained the way he did and what he felt through it. Now he turns to them and tells them straight on what he thinks and feels about Eliphaz's speech to him. He who withholds kindness from a friend forsakes the fear of the Almighty. He is a second person perspective. Sakto? He did not say you who withhold. So wala yung paman ginturaso. He is speaking indirectly. He is speaking politely before delivering his direct speech, starting from verse 21. So do gina pahanunot yah pang pagkaistorya. And it seems as if Job is telling Eliphaz and indirectly the two other friends that what Eliphaz said was not in any way an act of kindness. It is the contrary of it. So he rebuked his friends with these words. Weird, kaya ang mga commentator or commentators are are divided on this. Whether ang verse 14 forsakes the fear of the Almighty is Job himself or ang iyang a friend. Kaya mga argue naman yun. Even if a man has forsaken God as you claim me to be, should you, my friends, still not show kindness to me? Or is Job accusing his friends that the way you are dealing with me shows that you do not fear the Almighty? Eliphaz had been accusing Job that he had lost faith in God, that Job lost his fear in God. Now Job is returning the favor by telling Eliphaz that what he said, what he did, was not in line with someone who has fear of the Almighty. My brothers are treacherous. Verse 15. Ito, ah? Now it's interesting, again, tawag niya sila dre, my brothers. He's addressing them collectively. Now some people believe that either this was out of politeness. He does not want to single out Eliphaz. Ito, patama, gilang dritso, ikaw ya Eliphaz. But he calls them my brothers. Or, because Job believed that because of the silence and the attitude of his other companions meant they agreed with Eliphaz. So now he is giving them this speech 
generally. So from politely saying that what Eliphaz said was not an act of kindness, unchristian-like, here is another indirect but honest speech telling them that his brothers were or are treacherous. Anong meaning sang treacherous? The King James translated it deceitfully, but the, 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 the basic meaning of this is one who does not honor an agreement. The root word comes from the meaning to deceive. And this word was used to denote unfaithfulness in several different relationships. This week, my Facebook feed was flooded with a certain treacherous act of a certain musician to a certain singer. Treachery. Job is telling his friends, you are unfaithful friends. And now he proceeds to describe this act of treachery or unfaithfulness on their part in a synthetic parallel way. That is my figurative comparison. And he would build on that figure with two or more thoughts. So from verse 15 to 20 is one figure. Nga develops itself. The figure here, you are like a torrent bed or a torrential stream. What is this figure? Now a torrent bed is a wadi. Or it's a rift in the rock that gather water from rain or melting ice, which raises down the slope. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a pool of water in the middle of the desert. Which are dark with ice, verse 16 to 17. This torrent bed seems to be in ice form, where when it melts, it disappears. When it is hot, it vanishes verse 18 the caravans turn aside from their course they go up into the waste and perish the caravans of Tima and the travelers of Sheba hope they are ashamed because they were confident they come there and are disappointed the figure started with a pool of water then it ended with travelers in the desert they are confident, they are hopeful that they would go there and find water, yet they found none because the heat came. The thought here in verses 18 to 20 is that desert travelers cannot carry enough water, so they depended on rains or melting snow, which gather themselves in, in pools like this. Water station in the middle of the desert. And when you go there, they have nothing. How does this figure compare to what Job's friends have said so far? Verse 21 is what interprets and ties the figure from verses 16 to 20. Anong ba sa ila? Kagina, second person. Now, you. Anong ba sa verse 21? For you have now become... Nothing. You see my calamity and are afraid. My brothers, you were confident in your speech, but you became nothing or unreliable when my calamity claimed. What is he telling them? Job accused them of being unreliable, a snow fed stream that vanishes when it is hot. Dito makamu mo sa ligan. Sa may problema ko, ang ginahambal niyo sa akin, ang ginhimo niyo sa akin. Why man nakabuli? You were unhelpful. Ang mga nag-end sa verse 22, ang mga, Have I said, make me a gift? Or from your wealth, offer a bribe for me? Or deliver me from the adversary's hand? Or redeem me from the hand of the ruthless? I do not ask any gift from you. I was not kidnapped that I asked you for ransom. All that I asked for was a little sympathy, not some great gift or deliverance, but you were not helpful. Here we see that in times of great calamities, we will discover which supposed friends are truly 
unreliable. I was supposed to coin this in a positive way that in calamities, mamabalaan mo git kung sino ang masaligan mong abyan. But it seems that the point of Job's speech here is that my friends, supposed friends, he calls them brothers. My brothers, know what? When my problem came and it was so heavy, like a hot sun, you saw it and you were afraid. Gasala ka mo. And what you said to me and what you did to me is like this desert pool that when I tried to go there to find water, to refresh me, to strengthen me and comfort me, I found nothing. You were unkind. You were harsh. You were unreliable. Elmer verse 21 is the climax of Job's reactions to his friend's counsel. They offered no help. This verse is like a sermon about the special strength needed to be willing to make oneself available when we see others in a truly dreadful condition. But the risk involved makes us afraid. From what I understand with this thought is that he's telling us if we are truly reliable friends, when there is a great calamity that happened to our friends, what type of friend will we be? Now from what I understand is that more often it is easier to comment and provide a solution to a friend's problem from the outside looking in. Kung may problema sa utang, doon kahapos sa ito magkumintaro. Ah, hapos na na. Dapat untat sa pamakali, dapat untat sa sapi, dapat bus lang sa, hindi sa sige taxi. But when it involves offering any physical or actual help, diba? Kung may problema sa kwarta, kung kinanglan mo na magbuling, more often we become unhelpful or unreliable because the risk involved makes us afraid. Amuna, Job realizes that his friends can just talk. But they were afraid that the sight of the risk involved if they have to be there to really help Job. This is like Job telling them, May lang kamu sa hambal. Prokulbaan man kamu. And you were unhelpful. Now we just thank God for friends that we really discover are our real friends in times of calamity because they are really there to help. But in this case of Job, he found none. He found that his friend for starters, si Eliphaz, why pa ginhambalan ang duwa kay why pa mas lakambal? He found that Eliphaz was an unreliable friend. And thankfully, if we lose all our friends in the world, we have that one friend who we can go to. Amuna, F.B. Mayer cannot help himself but to say how great a contrast to the love and the friendship of Jesus. He's not like a brook that dries in the time of drought, but he's like a well of water springing up within our hearts forever. And I think that and I, I believe that even Job himself, he was stripped of his children, stripped of his wife. Tapos siguro ang problema, hindi na sa makasiling nga akong wife is my best friend. Kasi iya ganyan yung asawa, huwag ganyan sa ginunungan. He loses his wife as his companion, emotional companion. He loses his friends. And he would be brought to that feeling of being alone so that he would be driven to find this one friend who he can rely on, not like a dried brook, but a well of water who will be there within his heart forever. Jesus is that reliable friend. Verse 24, and we will end with this section. Teach me 
and I will be silent. Make me understand how I have gone astray, how forceful are upright words. But what does reprove from you? Reprove. Do you think that you can reprove words? When the speech of a despairing man is wind, you would even cast lots over the fatherless and bargain over your friend. But now be pleased to look at me, for I will not lie to your face. Please turn, let no injustice be done. Turn now, my vindication is at stake. Is there any injustice on my tongue? Cannot my palate discern the cause of my calamity? Verse 24, Job now challenges his friends. Teach me and I will be silent. Now at first glance, I had an impression that this was somewhat sarcastic. But the second line seems to suggest that this was an actual honest statement made. Job is telling his friends, make me understand how I have gone astray. Job was not admitting to having sinned. Rather, he said to his accusers, if I've sinned, show me where. Be specific. So far, you all you have made is generalization that I'm suffering for my sin. Show me where I've wronged. Show me my sins to warrant this great calamity. Mike Mason. Yes. Throughout the dialogue, they made veiled accusations, delivered general moral pronouncements. They hum, they haw, they equivocate. The feeling nila, ang tanan nga ginhambal nila, is true for all seasons, for all time, for all occasions. But all their insinuations are without substance. Why resibo? Wala ibidin siya. And by way of actually identifying and getting at the root of Job's problem, the best they can do is suggest that his attitude is all wrong. You all make general statements. Show me where. On verse 25, like Eliphaz, Job has stated a truth statement. How forceful are upright words. Indeed, if your words are correct and are true, it is powerful. It is forceful. However, the next lines will determine if these forceful, upright words were given in a good way or a bad way. Normally, that's verse 25. But what does reprove from you? Reprove. But it's quite clear. Job is like saying, yes, your upright words are indeed forceful. But what... How does your correction, being corrective, sa King James, mas mayo ganiya translation, what does your arguing reprove? Verse 26 clarifies this further. Do you think that you can reprove words? Now, Job is still in his right mind in spite of all of the pain because he is saying to Eliphaz, you are correcting my words, my complaint, not my actions. But you want to correct my words? Are we going to argue the semantics? Nowadays, what is big in America is political, being politically correct. That any statement you make must be acceptable to the general norm. You must say something, hindi ka maka-offend sa iban. Here, Job is telling his friends, do you expect me to express myself politically correct? Hindi ko hindi mo ma-offend? Or in this case, theologically, you want me to express in a correct way? Nga ginkigan nyo, nga sala akon pulong, ti sige ba? Gain nyo ko pulong, kay hambal ko. Hamay pa sa verse 26, do you think you can reprove words when the speech of a despairing man is wind? Who knows or does not care what he says if he is a desperate and a distracted man, but only speak what comes first into his mind? Now, Amalie Job, my words to you are like wind. Okay, ang wind. It's an expression of vain words. Nga para sa inyo, feeling nyo, hangin lang ako ng ginambal. That you don't take my words 
seriously? So if upright words are used properly, they can function to reprove a person, discouraging him from taking a foolish path. However, in argued in Job is that I was a despairing man, and I'm pouring out my complaint before God, and you are assuming wrongly that my words reveal something that you need to rebuke me. But, verse 27, he ended this way. It's kind of confusing. Sige nyo kukigan, ginakigan nyo ang ako nga speech. Pero sa verse 27? Kamu gani? Kamu gani sa ilong bugi, no? Kamu gani? Oh, wow, kamu gani sa mga ambal, no? You would even cast lots over the fatherless and bargain over your friend. What does it mean? Now, I'm not sure what that what it means here, but from what from what I gather, Job is telling Eliphaz, "You are as bad as someone who would cast lots over the fatherless, pustahan nyo ang wala tatay, and you would bargain or undermine your friend." So Job here seems to retaliate with charges of his own. In verse 27, you would even gamble over an orphan and bargain over your friend. Now, Francis Anderson said something really interesting. There is no more indication that the friends of Job gambled for orphans than there is that Job asked for bribes. Why mo kung maging pangayo sa inyo? So, gintabla niya lang. Kaya why man kung nangayo sang bribe sa inyo, wala man kamuga pustada para sa mga orphans, Perhaps what Job is saying is that our relationship has certainly deteriorated because now we're throwing insults at one another. You tell me, ngalain akong batasan, kaya kapangayaw ko bribe, now, balusan ka man lang kamo. Lain man yung batasan. Although it's not even true, kaya wala man evidence. But as far as Job is concerned, what you did was not good. So, it's easy to make generalizations to rebuke a friend without realizing that we are hurting them or our relationship. Job was just reacting. You accuse me of something I never did out of general statements out of a stereotype that you believe so deeply that when a person suffers, he must be guilty of some sin. So show me the specifics. Show me where I've wronged. Give me evidence. Teach me. Because it is bad human nature to make generalizations. It's part of our sinful human nature. Nga namiyan ta bala? Pariuso ng tanan. To make stereotypes of people. And even the statement I made, I fear it is also a generalization. Pero may kung naging nasa why sa akong asawa. Generalize ka naman. Any type of discrimination was born from this bad attitude. Throughout history, people had believed and perpetrated stereotypes that people of different gender have different value and status in society. Mga mabato, gin sila, sang equal rights because they have been stereotyped. Or, people of different wealth, people of different nationality or different skin color have different value, status, or salary. Kailain ka lang nationality. So, in Eliphaz's case, Job is telling them, you made a general accusation and you do not realize that you are already hurting me and I am in the brink of throwing this relationship away you insult me because I you cross the line so I will also cross the line so from what Francis Anderson is saying why nani? From calling them my brothers, now the the brotherhood is dead. You cross the line first, I will go and cross it too. 
because when we make general statements without any specific without any evidence sometimes we don't realize that we could hurt a person or we are already hurting our relationships so verse 28 now be pleased to look at me for I will not lie to your face Job does not like the way Eliphaz rebuked him so now he is calling his friends to pay attention to him why he would speak in all honesty someone even observed now look me look me in the eye Someone observed that it appears that throughout Job's speech, the friends have been hanging their heads and refusing to look at him. So in an odd reversal of roles, the sick man who was supposed to hang his head, siya dapat tani ga ga hulo yung abaga, kaya may sakit sa di ba? But now he holds his head high, looks his sleek and healthy inquisitor straight in the eye and tells, tells them, Tulukan niyo ko. So what courage and strength do you think it would take for this sick man to do this to his friends? Hinakusaran niyo ko? Tulukan niyo ko bala? Pay attention to me. Why? I will not lie to your face. Namihan ko sa King James. It is evident to you if I lie. I am speaking with all honesty. Verse 29, Please turn, let no injustice be done. Turn now, my vindication is at stake. Common words, ano dira? Verse 29, Please turn, injustice. For the first time, Job asserts before God his innocence. Kagina, I have not rejected the fear of the Almighty or the words of the Holy One now. Please turn. Let no injustice be done. My vindication, or ang King James name, my righteousness still stands. I still believe that I'm not guilty of any wrong. So teach me, cause me to understand where I have gone wrong. And he ends this chapter by saying, is there any injustice on my tongue cannot my palate discern the cause of my calamity kagina joe was telling his friends your words are flavorless your words are rotten now i can even discern the unsavory character of your words feeling mo hindi ko abot may panabor pa mako gamay and as far as my sensory capacity is concerned, what you said to me is not good. So we end this lesson by saying, in suffering, we can express our frustration. Job here was frustrated with his friends that were seemingly insensitive while he was conscious of the cause of his suffering. I will express my frustration. You have become an insensitive friend, but I'm convinced that there is no sin in my life that led me to suffer this way. So to end our study this morning, we ask how do we respond to friends like this? If someone comes to you and you feel that instead of offering you help and comfort, they have become ignorant, they have become insensitive. Pero sila pa niyang mga confident. Lupi, you, magambal, do. Do, ako pa nahuya sa doktor, sa ginambal sa akon. You only have one implication this morning. Under the heavy weight of calamities and grief, the godly sufferer can express what? If I have insensitive friends, I will not hide my frustration. If I don't like what you said to me, 
it it will just add on to my grief and my pain and my burden and my stress and my desire wanting to die kuya hindi ka gusto mapatay sa imo sakit gusto ka mapatay sa ginhambal nila sa imo kay kadamo sa ginpo hindi ka magkaon na muna hindi ka while being connected to sound reasoning to his faith and the cause of suffering he's not lose, lost sight of thinking clearly of holding on to his faith in his god and knowing what caused his suffering for sure he doesn't understand it completely but for one he knows nga hindi to sala ang nagcause sa akon nga pagantos just imagine how these thoughts and feelings go through your mind and heart all at the same time emotional intellectual spiritual and you're trying to get at the root of your suffering So expressing his frustrations, he is still conscious of its cause. For one, Job is confident that it was not for great sins. So the question ko sa aton, should the godly answer ignorant and insensitive comforters? Ano man, sabdun ta sila. If they come at us with ignorant comments and with insensitive comments, should we answer them? And how do we answer them? Let's end with these two verses. Let's read them together. Ready? Go. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself. So should we answer? Galing, why panatapos ang verse? Answer not a fool, but answer a fool. And with each occasion, with each reason there is an explanation answer not a fool according to his folly lest you be like him but also answer a fool according to his foolishness lest he thinks that he is wise hindi patihan pa masabat ta or hindi urong sulong now the apparent contradiction between these two verses led some of the rabbis to question the authority of Proverbs. Kay kisaga contradict ang Proverbs. Mahambal sa himuan ni, mahambal sa hindi ni himuan. Two actions completely in contradiction. But the mian ko, sing in ni Albert Barnes, these are two sides of a truth. To answer a fool according to his folly is to argue words with him to descend to his level of course anger and vile abuse. He's telling us, hindi pagpatuli ang mango kay karon kung mamati na sila sa inyo nga duwa nga gablalisay parehos lang kung muna karon ka duwa mango baisan nyo ang isa kabutang hindi matapos-tapos bais kung mango siya kagin bais mong mango parehos na kung muna karon tulukon you would lose your wisdom if you descend your self to the level of the fool so don't go down to his level amuna jeremiah did not answer hananiah christ did not answer the scribes or the pharisees may time gid nga si jesus gasabat may time man nga si jesus patulan ko pa na sa na guru istoryahan Kumunan ba ko sa inyo sa eleksyon? May mga butang nga pwede mo ipakigbato. May mga butang nga bayin na lang. E kung patulan mo pa, parus na ka muna karun duwa. Hindi, why man gapon may nagdaog sa inyo? Answer not a fool. But how do we answer a fool? Namihan ko sa inyo sa Puni Barnes, sambaya. It is to say the right word at the right time. There is a right time and the right word to say to a fool how and why that is to expose his unwisdom and untruth to himself and to others not by a teaching beyond his reach but by words 
that he is just able to understand. Okay, no? So it pays for us to know when to answer and when not to answer. And in the case of Job, he has given us an example. Third times, ang kis uh, kinanglan mo magsabang. Third times, ang kinanglan mo kis uh, maglinong. But here, under the heavy weight of calamities, Job did not hide his frustration. He's telling his friends, you better off be silent because your words were tasteless, unhelpful, and you are becoming unreliable, insensitive friends. How many John MacArthur, look at this. On top of his physical misery and his tempting wife, Job had to respond to ignorance and insensitivity from his friend by expressing his what burden would we lay on our friend na kung gaantos na siya imbis na problema ako niya iya problema ikaw pa ya ang nagdugang sa iya problema don't be that type of friend ignorant and insensitive to the problem you don't you can't figure it all out you can't understand everything so Express your frustration, but don't let go of sound reasoning and of your faith. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for this wise advice, an example from Job, on how we will deal with our emotions under such heavy burdens and calamities that could happen to us. We thank you for your word. This is our prayer. In Christ's name. Um, to introduce our new parting song before we will go to our communion with Pastor Rachel. Um, the Becca will sing to us a Christian's daily prayer.
suffer uh, from his friends physically, emotionally, and uh, we'll always remember that our Savior Jesus Christ suffered the cross Calvary for us to have the eternal life. Para na kita hindi naman antos sa niya spread to us sa akin hindi kita magandos dito sa uh, sa impir so uh, every first Sunday we observe uh, in a whole communion or sa sa pagkong doon sa ngayon ni Christ Jesus dito sa cross Calvary uh, para kita may kaangkol sa ito wala sa ito kag Rika elements, the bread and the wine, symbol of his body and his blood. Uh, this is just a symbol, a symbol. So, the party we done a presence as an atom, a savior, a savior, a prophet. And uh, before we come up for the exine, uh, may I give you time to uh, examine sa atom kaugalingon. Ask forgiveness sa atong mga kasalanan and at the same time, magpasalamat sa atong mga kasalanan. Let us present you. For I received from the Lord, but that which also I deliver to you, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he, had, he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So, I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go After the same manner, also he took the cup, when he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, you drink this cup, it does show the Lord's death. The Lord. There's one song that Joe could sing all throughout this ordeal, receiving his accusations from his friends. Is this song, Our sins, they are many, but his mercy is more. Let's familiarize ourselves with the tone of this song and the words of it. Shall we all stand? Let us sing, His mercy is more. Stronger than I 
If you could just count them one by one, we can still stand undeserved to receive any of your mercy, to receive any of this unmerited favor. But because it pleased, and yet because it pleased your heart to be merciful and to extend your hand to help, to bring us out of darkness to bring us out of the pit of sin and the depths of hell, to bring us close unto yourself, to receive us, to accept us, and to proclaim forgiveness to us who trusted in the work, the finished work of your Son on the cross. We are here to praise and glorify that mercy. While yes, we live in a frail in a fleshly state yet we thank you for this forgiveness that we have in Christ that we can stand confident and being conscious of our life before you our sins are many but your mercies are greater so we hold on to that mercy we hold on to that grace with confidence to live in holiness to live in godliness with a desire to please you in everything that we are and everything that we do father follow us with your presence and with your mercy and with your daily sufficient grace to enable us to strengthen us to empower us to live a life that is pleasing for you with the love of god the father the grace of our lord jesus christ and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all Amen.